quality corporate training meets powerful AI. Docebo is the world's first generative AI learning platform. You can customize the learning experience and create content in seconds. Learn more at docebo.com. This is the age of machines. Back in 1824, 200 years ago, the Italian poet Giacomo Leopardi was looking towards the future when he wrote, Nowadays, it is not men but machines. One could say that handle human affairs and perform the tasks of life. Today, almost a quarter into the 21st century, we've started to ponder much more than just the risks and opportunities of the machine age, but also what actually makes us human. And if this humanity can be reproduced or perhaps even surpassed, On the 10th of May this year, we lost James Harris Simons, a true prodigy. One of those men who raced ahead and saw the future before anyone else. As a young boy, he was keen on mathematics and logic, and before going to sleep, he would dwell on problems that his classmates couldn't even start to imagine. At the age of 26, he was deciphering codes for the NSA, or National Security Agency. The year was 1964, and he already held a doctorate in mathematics from Berkeley. For many years, he would be a renowned academic and mathematician, winning the prestigious Oswald Veblen Prize for Geometry in 1976. However, in his 40s, Simons would delve into a world that apparently didn't belong to him, finance. But this wasn't mere recklessness, it was bravery and foresight. In 1982, he founded the Renaissance Technologies investment management firm, which would soon become one of the most important companies for hedge funds in the world, making Simons a legendary success in the world of finance. Forbes, for example, wrote about him just a few years ago that he was arguably the world's best investor. Jim Simons found the way to use his academic background to his own advantage, and it paid off immensely. He turned a background in mathematics, not economics as usually expected, into a strength. He used algorithms and mathematical models to gauge the markets, and he made record profits. We could say that he almost never lost. Almost. I am Guido Brera, and you're listening to Black Box. The Hidden Side of Finance, a podcast by Cora Media, sponsored by Docebo. James Harris Simons, the billionaire mathematician, passed away at 86 years of age as one of the richest men in the United States. But we'd be doing him a disservice if we were just to list his wealth as his greatest achievement. Simons was born in 1938, and in 58, he graduated from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in mathematics and taught the subject at university in the 60s and 70s, making a name for himself in the field of academics. His discoveries also led to important breakthroughs in that which was his second passion, the field of physics a science in which human imagination searches for possibility in order to fill the gaps of what we already know. His Simons Renaissance Technologies Corporation was successful precisely thanks to mathematical models. These would analyze operations, elaborate hypotheses for development, and transform historical series into calculations for future steps. This was a radical change for the processes of investment, to achieve such a goal, Jim Simmons surrounded himself with experts from different fields, mathematicians, of course, as well as statisticians, physicists, and engineers, an approach which would embrace several disciplines from different perspectives, some of which were unconventional even, but undoubtedly original. More than just a billionaire and mathematician, Simon was also a philanthropist. He financed scientific research, especially for autism, 
a topic that was personally dear to him. James Harris Simons, or Jim for short, loved his privacy. He rarely gave out interviews, quite the opposite. He wasn't a very public person, instead preferring to keep a low and informal profile. He certainly didn't lack curiosity and ambition, however, which drove him to dizzying heights and cemented his legacy more than material wealth. Simons was known to invest where others wouldn't. He would search and find where it seemed there wasn't anything, such as when he financed new telescopes for an observation center in the Andes, searching for traces of the Big Bang. Here was a man asking himself the questions that others wouldn't dream of. Such is the time he analyzed the markets to see if they were influenced by lunar phases. Of course, there was also the unpredicted, the exceptional, even the unimaginable. For example, against every prediction, COVID brought the world to a halt in 2020. And Simon's company was forced to admit, after its main fund lost 14% in the first trimester of the year, that quantum models didn't work in such a volatile context. Because, in a certain sense, it takes creativity to make sense out of chaos. And even the best laid frameworks can fail when it comes to the unexpected. A recent story shines a light on this, despite not being directly about finance. It's the story of a match of Go, the ancient Chinese strategy game. This match took place in February 2023. On one side of the table, a machine, a computer with a sophisticated AI. On the other, a man named Kellen Pelrine, an amateur Go player, who devised an unconventional tactic to beat the machine. On that winter day, Pelrine won 14 out of 15 games. All he had to do was cut off and isolate the AI stones with his own, a strategy which any human opponent would have immediately averted, but not a machine. Pelrine created some diversion by moving on the Gobin, the game board, and meanwhile surrounded the opponent's stones forming a wide ring with his own. The ring started from a distance, from what for the machine were blind spots on the playing surface. The artificial intelligence couldn't see the whole picture, and so it was distracted, even fooled, by the ambitious and unconventional approach of a human. Creativity had the better over machine-based linearity, apparently perfect, but inflexible. Pelrine's phenomenal victory immediately brings to mind another series of Go matches. These took place in 2016, and in the losing player's words, the machine is an entity that can't be beat. 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 The machine was called AlphaGo, and it was a program from Google DeepMind. The human player, on the other hand, was the South Korean Lee Sedol, a legend of Go, professional player since the age of 12, 18-time world champion. Lee accepted the showdown announcing that he would have beat the machine, but instead he ended up losing four out of five matches. In the age of machines, the future interaction of humans and machines is in doubt. Just like in a match of Go, but here the Gobin table is as large as a whole planet, and each move decides the outcome of the future. Nothing is certain. Applying theoretical models to reality can fail even with a great man such as James Harris Simons. An AI can negate the experience and talent of a champion such as Lee Sedol, Yet an amateur such as Kellen Pelrine can beat the machine with that which Homer called the many turns of human ingenuity. It takes ambition and creativity, and not everyone has such talents. But what a machine cannot see, we still can. Black Box is a Cora News podcast produced by Cora Media. Written by Guido Brera with I Diavoli. Editorial supervision by Francesca Milano. Intro and sound design by Luca Micheli. Editing and post-production by Luca Micheli and Emanuele Muscatelli. Production organization by Alex Peverengos.